So, the Aussies, the men at least, have been belted in the ashes. I'm Australian and I'm a neuroscientist, so I want to find out exactly what's going on inside the batsman's mind. You've seen Jenny's science of tennis, well now it's cricket's turn. You see, watching a nice slow-mo replay of a batsman, it looks like he's got all the time in the world. But of course, he doesn't. Take a fast bowler like Stuart Broad. He lets the ball go at 90 miles an hour. That's 40 metres a second, and a cricket pitch is 20 metres long. So Michael Clarke at the other end gets half a second. To see the ball, choose a shot, and swing the bat. No time at all. The action potentials that are carrying signals around in his brain and telling his arms and legs to move are only going about twice as fast as the ball. There's no time to make any type of conscious decision about what to do. So pretty much everything that Clark does in that half a second is either premeditated or completely unconscious and instinctive. Just like subscribing to Head Squeeze. What's going on inside that helmet? Well, a couple of neuroscientists from Oxford and Sussex looked at exactly where the batsman's looking when he faces a delivery. They used a head-mounted video camera to record what was in front of him, but also the position of the iris, so they could track his gaze really accurately. The answer you'd think would be obvious. Keep your eye on the ball, right? That's what my dad always used to teach me, for all the good it did. But what they found actually was that the batsman watches the ball as it's being released, and then his eyes jump straight to where he expects it to bounce. This is what's called a predictive saccade. The eyes wait there for the bounce, and then they follow it really closely, just for about a tenth of a second or so. That makes sense because he needs to know whether the ball deviates off the pitch. After that, he's got enough information to predict where he needs to hit the ball. So as he turns his head to play the shot, his eyes only follow the ball relatively loosely. So now we know where he's looking, but which bits of information are the most useful? Well, a different group of neuroscientists in Australia investigated that by getting batsmen to face fast bowling while they were wearing a pretty crazy pair of liquid crystal glasses. These glasses turn black when the researchers hit a remote control. That means that they can shut off the batsman's vision at particular times during the delivery. It's scary, right? What they found was that if you block off the batsman's vision when the ball bounces, sure enough, he struggles to make contact. He needs that information from the bounce and after it to position his bat correctly. Interestingly, he still usually makes the right call about whether the ball is short or full. If it's a full ball, he comes forward. Short ball, he steps back, even though he hasn't seen the bounce. In fact, if you shut down the glasses even sooner, so the batsman doesn't even see when the ball's released, really good batsmen will still get into the right position for a short versus a full pitch delivery. In other words, the decision to play off the front or back foot is made before the bowler even lets go of the ball. In other experiments, they got a bunch of cricketers, including the Australian test team, this is about 10 years ago when we were really good, to watch snippets of video and try and predict whether a bowler they'd never seen before was about to let go of an outswinger or an inswinger or a bouncer. Looking at the results, it was only the top level batsmen who could really pick up useful information from before the ball was in flight. In particular, they found they were looking at the bowler's hand and arm. Club cricketers and backyard cricketers weren't much good at all. Scientists in South Africa have also looked at the difference between good and bad batsmen using an electroencephalogram, or EEG. They taped electrodes to batsmen's heads and measured a specific type of brainwave during that crucial fleeting window between the bowler letting go and the ball hitting the bat, or the stumps. What they found was that this particular ripple of brain activity called the P300, which is associated with decision-making, was both slightly bigger and slightly sooner 
in really skillful batsmen. They've trained their brains with all of that practice to make the best use possible of all the information that's available. And we can measure the difference between the top flight players and rank amateurs like me and you. Now, where the Australian top order are on that spectrum, I wouldn't like to comment. Maybe you've got an opinion. But next time you're watching someone get out in super slow motion to Jimmy Anderson or even to Ryan Harris, spare a thought for just how little thought the batsman actually gets to put into that shot. Check out the number hub on how to win at sport with maths and let us know down here which sport you'd like to hear about next.